Everybody's so quiet this morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. You know what I was just thinking? We don't have any announcements this morning prepared, but I do have one thing I want to share with you. Betty DeGroat had a flood at her house, and she really, I know it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everyone. <laughs> um, I know it's Father's Day, but if we have any men that could get with myself or Cole or Julie in the back um, before you leave, about two o'clock, we want to try and move her bedroom furniture out so that she can get her carpets dry because they're still soaked right now. So if we can get any help, if you can meet with us, that would be a blessing. But God is here and he is ready for us to worship him this morning. Are you ready to worship? Let's stand to our feet this morning. And let's have, we're going to have a word of prayer before we, we start worship. I just feel like it's appropriate time for us to just lift up the name of the Lord this morning. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you that you take us from glory to glory. And Father, we just want to give you praise this morning. We thank you for fathers this morning and they, what they do in our lives. And, and most importantly, we thank you. We're thankful for you, Father. And we just pray that you would be in the service, anoint Pastor Walter as he brings the message yeah. this morning, Father. We pray for the children this morning, the children's service, and every part of the service, we just pray that you would be in the midst of us, that you would settle in upon us, Father, and that we would lift our hearts to you, that we would open ourselves up to what you have. In Jesus' name, amen. your glory fall. Our Father who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. And I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every eye proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God give us a new every morning. Mercy is daily bread. Come on, sing it out. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we pray. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every i proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every i proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven
For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. Sing that again. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. One more time. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every eye proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every eye proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven hope that's your prayer this morning. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless bay, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was saved. For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground his body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Come on! Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Sing it again. Till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand till he returns 
Lord calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand Praise God Good morning family So I'll invite you to remain standing with me as I read from God's word We're in Acts chapter 3 the NIV One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness he had made this man walk? I'm going to skip down to verse 16. This is the most important part. By faith, in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Thank you. Amen. by I can see it in their eyes empty people filled with care headed who knows where on they go through private pain living fear to fear Feel 
all the grief they bear. They must hear the words of life. Only we can share. Thank you so much. I want to thank the praise team for accommodating that song for this morning. Um, I know it's not an easy song, but you were fantastic. From here to Hollywood. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but I was blessed by that song because it means a lot. Brings a reality to the people of God. You and I. For people in this world need the Lord. Just as you and I needed him way back. And then he found us. And then he saved us. And now he used us in a good sense to bring that gospel to others who need the Lord just as we did. And the only way that the kingdom of God grows is if you and I go out there and share the love of Christ to a world that is broken, to a world that has a, such an emptiness in their hearts, and they seek to fulfill and to meet those that void in themselves by doing certain things. Not all of them being bad things, but certainly not filling that void that only, only God can do. And that's what I would like to share this morning from this portion of the scripture. People need the Lord. So let's go and share the power he gave I'm going to go through some verses in particular and perhaps bring some thoughts on those. By the way, I want to uh, congratulate all the fathers today. I join my voice to Summer uh, in congratulating all the fathers. What a, an awesome task is ours to lead the children of God because our children are a gift of God and he entrusted them to us 
so that we can raise those kids for him. What a different perspective, right, of parenthood. Those are not my kids. They are his kids that he just entrusted to us to raise them for him. Thank you for Pastor Tag and Cindy, Pastor Cindy, that they have taken a responsibility with many of our young kids to bring them closer to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus the Christ. So I want to say good morning as well to those who are looking at us through the internet. And Allison sent me a text last night where she said, make sure that you say hi to me because I'm watching from Key West. So Allison, if you're watching, here is my commitment to fulfill your petition. Let's go to the Word of God and let's read verses 1 through 3. One day, it doesn't say which day it was. One day, whichever day, it was not a particular day, it was not a holiday, it was one day. Peter and John, what a couple. Peter and John, of all the disciples, Peter and John, the one who left Jesus by himself and betrayed him, denying he knew him, and then the one that was faithful and stayed right there at the cross. What a couple. If you look closer to the Gospel of John, you will see that there was a certain animosity between Peter and John. But now they have been transformed. And all those things are in the past, never to be looked at again. And now they are a team. Peter and John are going to the temple at the time of prayer. It was about three in the afternoon or the ninth hour, if you want to measure it according to the Jewish time. They were going to the temple to pray, to have communion with their Savior, to have communion with their God. I'm happy to say that we are all here in this temple and we have come to praise God and to receive from Him a word of encouragement and challenge, if I may say. And so Peter and John went to the temple that day. And verse 2, now a man who was lame from birth. This is not somebody that lost the ability to walk because of some illness or accident, anything like that. As he developed in the womb of his man, somehow his extremities, his legs, were not formed properly. And therefore, this man is lame from birth. And he was carried, I guess he had some friends or family, who carried him from wherever he was to the temple of God. And on that entrance called the beautiful. Particularly that entrance, because it was the, not the only entrance, but the one that most people used. It was so beautiful. It was made of bronze and gold and silver. It was about 70 feet, 75 feet tall and, and 65 feet wide. The historian says that it took 20 men to open and close the doors. Imagine that. And many other beggars, I guess, were there. He was not by himself. There were plenty of people who were in need. And they just placed them in that area because, as you may know, in the Old Testament, God asked his people to be charitable, to share with those who are in need. Remember, there was no social security at that time. So you were on your own. So this man is right there at the temple. Impaired by birth. And may I suggest 
that we can identify with this man. And humanity is identified with this man. For we are impaired by birth with that rebellious nature that we are born with, who, which impede us to please God, that somehow bent us in our will to do the wrong thing when we know what we ought to do. And I believe that if we are honest, we have all been there, have we not? Disobeying God. Not by ignorance, as some people did in the Old Testament before the law was given, but by willful desire. We are born with that bent that inclines us to be rebellious. And if you don't think that that's true, answer this question for me, if you please. Who in his right or her right mind teaches a child to lie? And I clarify, in his or her right mind, because there are some crazy people that teaches the kids to do things that they know are wrong. But who in their right mind would do that? And yet, guess what? Except for Sean, everybody else have lied in this world. My, why, are you guys, why are you guys laughing? Is that not true? Well, I don't know. I think I hit a nerve there. And we have all done things that are not pleasing to God, who are destructive to us and to his kingdom, if you please. We have become better and better in doing the wrong thing. In the past, wars happened with arrows and spears, right? And then they discovered the catapult. And they put those stones and things with the oil. And wham! And now they have a cannon, so to say. And they began now the rifle and this and that to the nuclear weapon. So we have become a lot better in doing the wrong thing. Do we not? In Genesis chapter 6 and verse, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 6 and verse 5, this is what the Lord said. The Lord saw how great man wickedness on earth has become. Now, he did not create us to be wicked, did he? He created us to have fellowship, to be with him, to be blessed, and for us to worship him. And yet, somehow, instead of communion with God, we began to become wicked. And not only that, that every thought, every inclination of their hearts, every inclination of their hearts was only evil, only evil, guess what? All the time. What, what, what a place to be. That the thoughts of mankind were only evil all the time. And if you let me say this, the cause of the wickedness of man finds its root in the self. Did, I, did you hear that? The wickedness of man finds its roots in the self. Why do I say that? Because when Satan asked Eve to eat from the fruit, he did not push her. He did not make her. He, he, he only said, listen, he knows. And then he projected himself in Eve because what he told Eve is what he wanted but couldn't. Did you hear me? He wanted but couldn't. And he said to her, if you eat from that fruit, you will become what? 
like God. Oh, the self began to think about, oh, so I can be a lot better than what I am right now. Satan just shut his mouth. And in the mind of Eve, herself, the self of Eve, looked at the fruit. And she found it desirable. Not because the fruit was juicy. Desirable because of what she could get if she ate of the fruit. I desire to be like God. And that same self in us that is now damaged by that act of disobedience of Adam and Eve is in us. And our self says, I only want to be with people like I am. And so we begin to discriminate people by the color of their skin. We begin to discriminate people by their ethnicity. Did you think about that? Because you are not, you don't look like me, therefore I don't want to be with you. And guess, between the two of us, guess who's better? I am. I am. Because I am Hispanic. Or I am because I am black. Or I am because I am white. Or I am because I am Asian. Or I am because I am whatever you want to put there. And then we begin to separate that diversity that God gave us. And the diversity that God gave mankind was to support each other. Was to be united Because each culture brings something good into the life of mankind. And instead of being blessed by diversity, we have cursed, not God, we have cursed diversity because my self says, you're not as good as I am. Not only that, Pastor Tai, Self says, this piece of land is mine. And don't you dare put a foot in here. Because I will defend it with my life. This is my piece of land. And the resources that I have here are mine. And if you want any, you have to pay dearly for it. And then the other guy says, no, this is my piece of land. And the resources that I have here are mine. And if you want them, you have to pay dearly for it. And so on and so forth. And man began to put boundaries and frontiers and limit. God did not make this world like for that. Imagine this. If we, instead of exploiting the resources that we think are ours, because they are God, right? begin to share with each other. Instead of budgeting so much money for defense, do you know the chunk that every country set aside to build war weapons? If we use that money for the betterment of society, what a different world we we live in. Isn't it? Because that's what self is. Self, you know what self did? At the very beginning, Cain and Abel brought both of them an offering. And self said in the heart of Cain, why should I be buying this guy the animal for sacrifice? I'm going to take my best veggies to God. That's not what God wanted. And he did not look good at the offering of Cain. And what did self in the heart of Cain do? I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill this guy. And from that point on to this day, self is killing us. Self is killing us. Dealer in his class in the Sunday school, almost every Sunday says, self has to die. Because until self dies, you cannot surrender to the God that created you. Because when self dies, then you are willing 
and able to give God what he deserves, which is all of you. I surrender all. Have you heard that? I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. How could you surrender if self is what moves you in life? Amen. Hey, don't call me to be part of your. So here we have this man that somehow represents you and I. A man in need, impaired from birth. This man sees Peter and John in verse 3, and they were about to enter the temple, and he asked for what? For money! Poor guy could not see beyond his nose. How is it that uh, uh, saying, give a man a fish and he will eat one day, but teach the man to fish and he will eat the rest of his life? Is that the way it goes? Well, if you keep enabling people who can not to do, think about that. If you keep enabling people who can, and not do. That's not a good thing in life, is it? We have to be careful whom we help and how we help people. In the Salvation Army, in the 30 years that I served with them, 30-some, many people came to our office asking for help. In many instances, I would say 99% of the time, they came to us for financial assistance. You know what, Pastor? Uh, I was laid off and I cannot pay my rent or feed my family this day. And, and so uh, I'm here to see how you can help. And I say that in many instances we were able to meet those needs, to pay the rent, to give the uh, food for the family. In many instances we, we were able to do so. But there were instances that, that we couldn't. For whatever reason, maybe we did not have the finances to do it at the time, or perhaps what they were asking for was something that we were not able, by law, to do. Let me give you an example. I don't know if the law has changed, but in those days, if you help somebody to go from one state to another state, I'm not talking within the state. I'm saying if I send somebody from Pennsylvania to Colorado, I am responsible for anything that that person does in that state. So if that person takes food stamps, I am going to be asked to pay for that. If that person commits a crime, I am responsible for that. I, again, I don't know if that has changed, but it was that way. So when people came to us and said, you know what, my family is in Florida and I need to go there, we needed to say, I'm sorry, cannot help you go there. Because the law prohibits me to do so. But every person that came to our door asking for financial assistance, whether they get it or not, in addition to what we provided them, all of them went out with a verse or two or a portion of the scripture or a time of prayer that encouraged them to face their difficulties in the strength of Christ, whether they were Christians or not. I remember one day, this man came to our office, like Pastor Ed in jeans, Shirt on top. Different from Pastor Ed, he had a, a white t-shirt and the shirt was all unbuttoned. He looked like somebody who came to ask for financial assistance. Really, really, look, he looks like that. He brought a, a 
an envelope in his hand, gave it to my wife. I was not at the office at that time. He says, I bring this to you and left. When Martha opened the, the envelope, there was a $300,000 check to the Salvation Army. $300,000 donation to the Salvation Army. And then we got 200000 more. So this person left the Salvation Army half a million dollars donation. Can you imagine that? But Pastor Ed, we would have to pull him down because he would jump so high, his head would go through the... We would have to put, push him down. I mean, the gym will be built right away, right? $300,000. Half a million altogether. And we ask this guy, why? This is my father. About 30 years ago, 30 years ago, was in need. And he came to the Salvation Army. And the Salvation Army gave my father food to meet our needs at home and help him pay the rent for a couple of months until he was able to go back to his job. And he's so grateful that not only they, did give, they, they gave him that assistance, but they prayed with him. And he always told me that when he passed away, this money was to be given to the salvation. People need the Lord, don't they? And we need to share that power. Not that we are expecting something back from it. But sometimes when you bless, you are blessed. And so I continue to read. This guy asked for money. And Peter looked straight at him. And so did John. Eye to eye contact. The guy was waiting for the person to put the hands in the pocket and get some money. And I know about that because in the Salvation Army, you know that we ring that bell in the summertime, I mean in the wintertime, Christmas time. And uh, if you happen to be in the north, that makes it more difficult because it's cold. It is so cold that after 15 minutes, you are not ringing the bell. The bell is ringing you because you are shaking so much. And we knew who was going to give because they made eye contact. Many people will come and the, and the kettle is there and they will go like this, like, like, oh, I didn't see. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, don't do this to the kid or whatever. An excuse not to make eye contact. And maybe 10, 20 people will go by that kettle and ignore that we are there. But then comes this one person. And look at you at the eye. And say, ah, I'm going to get a buck here, you know. And you say, Merry Christmas. And the person says, Merry Christmas to you too. Pop, put the so the people who beg know who's going to give and who's not. And Peter looked at him. What is your name? Brian. Welcome, Brian. We love to have you here. I know you don't live too close to us, but you, you're certainly not living too far from God. Amen? I hope you're blessed by, by the time we share together. He knew Peter and John were going to give something to him. And they look at him, eye to eye contact. Eye to eye. And so he was waiting to get the quarter, dollar, whatever money they used those days. And then somehow his, his expectation went down. <laughs> and Peter said, silver or, or gold, I have not. Oh, what a bummer. Silver or gold, I have not. 
So what are you going to give me? Listen carefully now. Silver or gold I have not. Material things that perhaps you're expecting, I cannot give you. But what I have, I give you. And I was questioning myself, what is it that Peter and John had that could help this man? That somehow blessed this per person that is asking for money. Because he needed to eat. And only God knows what else. What is it that Peter and John had? And it's key to understand this portion of the scripture for we to know what they had. What is it that they had? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what they had. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And let me, let me just take a moment to share a thought in, in what that means. The baptism of the Holy Spirit blesses us in two ways. In two ways. One way is that transformation of the character. It's a transformation of who you are. To the likeness of Jesus what we call the fruit of the Spirit. That is one component, so to say, of what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. We may not emphasize that much because we always say, right, when they were baptized in the day of Pentecost, what was flourishing there? Not the change of character, but what? The gift. But may I say to you, friends, if you are truly baptized with the Holy Spirit, you cannot continue to be the person you were. Cannot. Because the Holy Spirit will sanctify you, will transform you, will purify you, will change your ways. Pastor Mark, gave his testimony here. And he saw, said that when he accepted Jesus, the Holy Spirit messed with his life. Remember that? Be careful what you ask because the Holy Spirit messes with you. He, do, he does. And he changed him from a gang member to a man of God. From a gang member to a man of God. What a change, isn't it? Pastor Ed, and if I lie, is by the mouth of Pastor Barb. <laughs> if this is not true, you, you go to her. <laughs> but I remember one day, because I remember the sermons that I preached. I remember one day she said that Pastor Ed was the life of the party. Did you say that or not? Right? He was the life of the party. And God changed him from being the life of the party to become a preacher of the life. What a transformation, isn't it? It is impossible. What word did I say? Impossible. If you are truly <coughs> baptized with the Spirit of God to continue to be the same person you were. I am not saying... That when you are baptized, all of a sudden, as if it was a, with a magic wand, that you are completely transformed and perfect. Did I say that? No. But what I'm saying is that from that point on, and as you continue to live in this planet Earth, the Holy Spirit daily, continually works in your life to perfect you. Until the day you depart. And then you are glorified. Glorified. No more sinful nature. Amen. So what is it that Peter and John had? They had that transformation of the Holy Spirit that changed their character from a coward 
to a courageous man who gave his life for, God, for Christ. Imagine that. Let me tell you what they have. They have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So that at this time, Peter and John could not just go by this person in need. Because the love of the Holy Spirit in them compels them to do something about this man. You cannot. Because the love of Christ is now in you. And compassion is part of the character of the children of God. The expression of, of the love of God for us is compassion, grace, and mercy. And we have to be graceful and merciful to the people in this world. We have to be patient with them. We need to continue to pray for those who accept Christ, but the enemies of the soul brings a fight to them. We need to fight alongside with them. And the only way we do that, if it is the fruit of the Spirit, what the Spirit produces in those who are His, praise His name, is that kind of character that begins with love. And ends with self-control. Amen? But I tell you this. If that was the only aspect of what the Holy Spirit does in the life of a person, which would be great, doesn't it? But it's not sufficient. It's great, but it's not sufficient. So what is the other component? Of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One is the change of character. And the other one is the equipping you with abilities to use that character for the benefit of those who God wants to bless. So if I have the character but I don't have the equipment to work, what good is it? But if I have the gift and I don't have the character, I can become a selfish person. As many are today that manipulate congregations with the gift of preaching, but not for the glory of God, but for the fattening of their pocket. So you have to have both. You have to have the transformation of character and the empowerment to do the task. Amen? And they work in harmony. One cannot function without the other. And that's what Paul, uh, Peter and John had. They had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, his power. In Luke, the word of God says that John the baptizer said that one which is greater than I am will baptize you, not with water as I do, right? But he will baptize with you what? With the Holy Spirit and fire, both. The Holy Spirit changing character and the fire to equip you to do the job. And I tell you, all of you who are in Christ, all of you without, without exception, including those who are watching me uh, uh, on the internet, if you are really in Christ, you have been equipped and blessed. And we are responsible in the presence of God to use what we have to bless. Amen? So we continue the reading. So the guy, right, verse 5, gave his attention to them expecting, and this is what Peter said. I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, what? Walk. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. I'm giving you a lot more than a million dollars. Jeff Bezos was the other one. 
Bill Gates. What's the other one? Elon Musk. And so on and so forth. Do you think they are happy people? Well, I, I don't know if they are happy or not. I, I know that Bezos divorced, right? That doesn't make a happy marriage, does it? Does it? Money is not the answer to our needs. Christ is the answer to my every need. Do you know that song? Well, learn it then. <laughs> I give you that homework. Christ is the answer. He is my friend indeed. And that's all I know. But it's Christ that is the answer. And it's needed by people who are rich. It's needed by people who are very poor. It's needed for the whites and the blacks and the browns and the yellows. And in every strata of society. Neil, guess whom God is going to use to bless the people that need the Lord? Who? No, who? You. Aren't you glad that you are married to her who helped you on that one? Because <laughs> she's not expecting us to do it is expecting you and me. And that makes it personal. It brings accountability. It brings accountability when I realize it is me whom God is expecting to use to bless those people in this world. Amen? I remember that when Pastor Ed was praying, he says, the Holy Spirit will be with us for one hour or two or whatever it takes, so there you go. You blame him for that. <laughs> Even though I'm still on time, it's only 11.29, and I am about to pray. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became what? Strong. The man received a blessing. Those muscles and bones in his legs were damaged, weakened, stiff, most likely, by whichever position those legs were. I don't know. But he did not have to get, take any therapy, did he? <laughs> he didn't have to go to access health uh, therapy place to teach him how to walk. Because when the Lord does the work, he does it fully, completely. There are some healers. Did you hear this? See this? Oh! May the Lord fix that muller. And then all of a sudden, the guy comes with some silver or, or, or gold in that cavity. And I said, Jan, my God does not need to use that. He will give him a brand new muller, don't you think? Why fix the bad one when he can give you a brand new one? He didn't give this man. What do you call those things? Uh, crutches. He, he, he didn't even, listen to this, he didn't even restore his legs. Restore means that at one time he could walk, right? Lost it and God restored it. He did not restore it. He recreated it. Brand new. And when God takes your spiritual life and your broken dreams and he intervenes in your life, he brings that peace that goes beyond our understanding, that helps us to face the difficulties that we need to face in life. Bella, 
I remember, not by word, but your testimony when you were baptized. It really touched my heart. And I need to say this to you. You're going to face difficulties sooner or later. Challenges in your life. And God is saying to you, just trust me. I'll be there with you. You hear me? Trust me. I will be there. That may not be. Your sister may not be. But he will be. Amen? And if you keep your eyes on him in that storm, you will come out of it more than conqueror. Amen? Don't forget that. And so the man began to jump, began to walk, verse 8. And then he went with them where? To the temple. <laughs> to the temple. Guess what? When you share the power, the people who is blessed want to come to the temple and be grateful to God. And join the crowd, so to say. And that's how the kingdom of God grows. By sharing the power. Because when you share the power. And the Holy Spirit is in you. You cannot wait until Tuesday. To come to that men's fellowship. You cannot wait until Wednesday. To come to the to the Bible study or whatever we call that. You cannot wait until Friday to go to the, what is it called? The what? Experience in the Word. You cannot wait until Sunday to be here in this fellowship. You don't have to come. It is that you want to come. You see the difference? I said to my kids, listen, if you want to go to church, you don't have to go to church. But if you don't want to go to church, then you have to go to church. <laughs> Makes a big difference, doesn't it? So this man is testifying, is he not? He's testifying by his jumps, by his leaping. By, by saying, hey, here I am. And everybody knew he was the man who was out there who was crippled from birth. And he's jumping and he's praising God. Testify to those people. And when you bless someone, God is praised. God is praised. When you share the power. Do not rob God of his praise because you keep the power to yourself. Amen? And when all the people, verse 9, saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called the beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Not only did he testify those in the temple, but he testified to those who were around. And people were amazed. Pastor Ed, people are amazed that I'm preaching the word of God because I, I was doomed to hell. To hell. And, 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 and people who knew me from the past are amazed of the change of my life, of that character, and the use of his gift that he had bestowed upon me. Some of them have come to the Lord. Some of them have not. But they are still amazed of the change. Amen? Well, let's see what happened then.
Verse 11. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them at the place called the Solomon Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why, do, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at, at us as if by our own power, our own what? Power or godliness, we have made this man walk? Why are you staring at us? And then I go to verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made whole or strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that, faith that comes through him that has completed, completely healed him as you can all see. And that's my last point. Amen, because it's the last point? Or amen <laughs> I don't know. Who said amen? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Listen, remember that I see it there too. <laughs> I'm going to forgive that one. I'm going to use that gift of character of God loving me to forgive you. But that came from the heart. Amen. Anyway. It is important that you do not take credit for what God does. And that self, remember I started with that, the self likes to be. Oh, thank you for this. Oh, thank you for your prayer. God listened to you. And you, and you feel that, that you're it. You know? That you're all that. Always remember to give the glory to whom the glory belongs. And that's God. Because without him you can do. Isn't that what he said? Without me you can do nothing. Right? Always keep that in mind. Because at times a successful ministry can destroy the ministry. You hear what I said? A successful ministry can destroy the minister if that minister, he or she, begins to take the credit of God and begin to think, look how powerful. So here we are. We have given the Holy Spirit to transform our character and to equip us to bless. And I say to you this morning, please understand, people need the Lord. People need the Lord. Then please go and share the Amen. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity given to us to hear your message because it applies beginning from the preacher <clears throat> to every person that is here in this building or the ones who are listening in the internet. I just pray that you use these words to bless each one of us and to challenge us to share that power given to us. And I say hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen <coughs> and amen. shine upon you 
be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. All these words that you're singing right now come from the Word of God. So I want you to think about that when you're singing 
Amen. We're going to sing it together as a church. I just want you to bless the Lord this morning and thank him for those promises as we sing amen. Every voice, you ready? Amen. 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 One time, just our voices. Thank you for this blessed time that we could gather in your house where we meet with you, where you meet with us, where we praise you and you receive our prayers and our praises for your goodness and your mercy and the grace that you've shown us because we received your word, God, because we knew we needed you. We knew something was missing. Even though we had everything, we were missing something. And it was you, God. And Lord, I'm thankful in my own life that I found you. You found me. And thank you, Lord, that you bless us. And you're so good to us mm -hmm. as we learn how to trust you, to lean on you, to rely on you and depend on you because without you, we can do nothing. All of our efforts are in vain without you. And Father, I thank you that you go before us and beside us and behind us and all around us. You are there. Never alone are we. Never alone because you are a good God. A God who loves us like we can't even imagine. Like we've never been loved before or ever will be loved. That's who you are. And we thank you and we praise you as best we know how. As we're learning, God, to worship you and to praise you and to appreciate you for all that you are to us and so much more. Thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that I praise and thank you. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. <laughs>